in my opinion, these are the three most common single board computers, especially used for retro gaming and widely accessible. I might give a runner up to Orange Pi. You saw there how these things uh, stack up as far as specs, but let's take a, a closer look both in performance as well as retro gaming. Let's start this video off with the last Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. Now there is a newer version of this launch, but you can still buy this and they are still supporting this as well. So these are readily available. This is the 1.2 gigahertz, one gig of RAM, onboard Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, four USB 2.0, ports and the 10 by 100 LAN port. Something about this that's not that great is that LAN port is really slow for transferring ROMs. That was something that the newer version did really well. But the reason why this is so popular is it is the cheapest in the bunch. You can get up and running after you buy the power supply, everything else for under $100. And it has so many pre-made images, so many different software, so much optimization, so much customization from the bezel project to all sorts of other uh, people that have pre-coded scripts for you, uh, making it by far the most popular uh, single board computer, both price point and in the software. Uh, earlier this year on Pi Day, they released this newer version. Basically, you got 0.2 more gigahertz up on the processor and you got that upgraded ethernet. That to me was really the only big deals on this. Um, I mean, some people like the power over ethernet, but for retro gaming, um, it was just a slight performance increase, but they kept the price low. So they continue to lead as far as price point and they continue to lead right now under software as well. That could change and that's why this this video is kind of interesting because a year from now this could really be different but right now for the price point and what you get the Raspberry Pi Model 3B is still the number one sold out of all three of these the best price point and has the most development done on it um, it's still a great board and it's a great starting board but as we develop and as more companies come into the to the to the market we're seeing some change a lot of this has to do with raspberry pi foundation which is the company that manufactures these boards they're more of a learning company less of a a business and that's where asus comes in which is they are a business they make monitors they make laptops they make all they're making a phone right now so for those reasons they look at what does the consumer want and how can we pack the most they look at it from a business perspective pass the pack the most performance the most upgradability into as best price as we can and that's what they've done here for only sixty dollars you get 4k video you get the bluetooth and the wi-fi uh, you get a way faster processor and out of the three this actually has the best gpu at 600 megahertz a lot of emulation doesn't use the gpu but it just shows the performance potential of this and some of the uh, advanced emulators do use some gpu so it can outperform uh the the odroid as well as the Raspberry Pi 3, thus making it a really great option. But where this, this doesn't do so well is with the development. There's still people developing the software, especially for retro gaming. Moving on, we have the XU4. Now, the XU4 has USB 3.0. Neither of the other boards that we've reviewed so far has that. It has the fastest processor at 2 gigahertz. All three of these boards have a four cores, but this by far has the fastest as far as uh, gigahertz. Um, this also has the option to add an EMC storage as well as the micro SD card. And uh, the thing lacking on this is it's the most expensive at $80, and it does not have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So it's the best performance, and we're seeing some great development on the software side, but by the time you add the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi, you're at a, a little steeper of a price point. So that's why it's not really a clear choice on which one to choose because there are so many differences. Now specs and real world performance is very much different. Explaining computers already did some benchmarks. So I'm gonna go ahead and slow, throw those up here for comparison. And then we're gonna go into some emulation tests. And as you see in these tests, the Tinkerboard actually won out the Odroid in a couple of tests and the Raspberry Pi actually uh, did pretty well as well. And that has to do with both the software and the hardware combinations. But as you'll see, as far as retro gaming, the Odroid so far has shown to be superior and uh, but that's not to say that as the software updates things might change so here's a uh, Nintendo 64 and Dreamcast I like better on the Odroid out of the three but then PSP I'm kind of liking the Tinkerboard's performance the best as you're gonna see right here so. 
for how high res I'm running this right now, this is running really good. So here we got a ton of people firing at us all at once. And as you can see, it's, it's running just fine. Swinging back side to side. I mean, this is pretty good comparatively to what we're used to other places for a little single board computer under 100 bucks. Lastly, here is a fully loaded Raspberry Pi 3 image with all sorts of great scripts, fully loaded, running really great. So the question is, you know, do you go for performance, do you go for software, do you go for price point? And that's just it. It's not a clear cut decision. I see, uh, as far as if I was looking out a year from now, I really think the Odroid and the Tinkerboard are going to get a ton more support and overall will be the better choice. But as of today, right now, what are you going to spend your money on? The Raspberry Pi 3 is the definite winner as far as if you're not a risk taker. But with all that said, I'm actually really happy with all three boards and they all offer some great stuff. They all have different third party accessories. We're seeing some awesome cases coming out. We're also seeing some purpose built images being put out and we have some great groups of people supporting these boards as well. So the future is bright. I'm really excited about it. Computing power keeps getting cheaper. Where we are right now, we just have a ton, a ton, and ton of options. With all that said, that's what I think. Let me know what you guys guys think there'll be links in the description to both videos of me going more in depth on each individual uh, single board computer as well as the cheapest and best place to buy these boards as well i hope you enjoyed don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one